As a kid, my dad always taught me, Dime con quien andas y te diré quien eres, which means, tell me who you hang out with and I'll tell you who you are. So let me ask you, who are your closest friends? I'm not talking about people you DM on Instagram or converse with on Twitter. I'm talking about people who will pick up the phone if you call them, people who will drop what they're doing because you're in town and will meet you up for dinner on a weekday. It reminds me of a saying I once heard, your best friends aren't the people who will bail you out of jail, it's the people who are sitting alongside you in jail. One of my best friends is Yukai Chow. We met while pledging for Delta Sigma Pi at UCLA and we've been best friends ever since. We've built startups together, student organizations together, communities together, raised funding together. When you're doing something hard, it always feels good to have someone there by your side, even if you're both the blind leading the blind. It's like Batman and Robin, Kobe and Shaq. Tough work is always better when you have a partner that compliments you and is making the struggle much more enjoyable. So then the question is, how do you find your partner in crime? I'm going to give you four actionable tips that you can immediately apply to build out your network and find your business partners. The first one is to be someone worth knowing. Now, what does that mean? It means you are a person with a skill set or knowledge that is sought after. You may think, but I don't know anything worth knowing. Well, damn, it's time to start learning and building that skill set. It can be anything. I was scrolling through YouTube and watched a video of a guy cleaning the hoofs of a cow. This dude had over 2 million views. The only way for this to work is for you to choose a topic or a skill set that you are deeply passionate about. If you don't, then you'll get bored after a while. You have to love it so deeply that you want to study it nights and weekends. Got it? All right. While building your skill set, it's time to be a responsible person with integrity. If you don't have integrity, then no one will want to partner with you and no one will recommend you to their network. The best way to build integrity is to completely remove the victim mentality from your mindset and adopt the hunt-gather mindset. A victim waits for others to provide for them. A hunter-gatherer hunts prey to feed their family. A victim points blame to someone else when something goes wrong. A hunter-gatherer must own and learn from their mistakes so that the next time they can do better. A victim wants everything right now. A hunter-gatherer plants crops today, tends to them, and over time is able to reap those rewards. While you're building the hunt-gather mindset, it's time to learn the basic skill of remembering people's names. I, like you, used to suck at remembering people's names. And then I learned the simple trick to do it. It's all about association. Our brains are much better at associating vivid images with words than to just try and remember words by themselves. Think about directions. It's easier to remember to turn right at Earth Cafe than to turn right on Market Street. And the value of remembering people's names is immense. When you talk to them by saying their first name, they immediately pay attention. Try it. It will completely change the way people perceive you. So to remember people's names, all you have to do is immediately associate a name with vivid imagery. I tend to associate a name with a famous person. For example, I met a woman named Gabby today and I immediately associated her with my younger daughter's preschool teacher, Miss Gabby. Okay. Well, Miss Gabby is not necessarily famous, but it did the trick. I met a woman at my cryotherapy location named Kristen. I immediately associated her name with Kristen Dunst. Their names don't perfectly match, but the association helped me remember her name. Once you have a good grasp on the three tips, become someone worth knowing, build integrity, and remember people's names, then you're ready for the fourth and hardest step. You gotta put yourself in positions to meet people. There are tons and tons of way to meet people, but if you don't have a solid grasp on the first three steps, then you won't have the confidence to meet people. Once you have a grasp of the first three, you'll be amazed to find how much easier it is to meet random people and start a conversation. You'll remember their name, so you will captivate their attention. 
You'll be an expert so you can teach them something new as opposed to talking about something boring like the weather. And you'll be a person of integrity so they'll trust to build a relationship with you. That's it. Follow those four steps and you will find your partner in crime. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, add them in the comment section or hit me up on Twitter. See you on the next time.